Okay. Are we all here? It's time to 6.03, so it's time to start the meeting. Can we have the agenda up on the screen, Rochelle? So our first is a roll call. Rochelle, could you call to see if we have a quorum, please? Yes, please forgive me. Um, Vicki Gordon Chair. Present. Omar Butler. Richie Cook. Here. Derek Hilliard, Vice Chair. Present. James, please forgive me, Tolu. Present. Craig Lazaretti. Present. So that constitutes a quorum. So at this time we will take public comment. Is there anyone here who has submitted public comment or would like to speak? I'd like to speak. This is Henoveva Calloway. Henoveva? Yeah. You Hello. have three minutes? Yeah, it'll be less than two minutes. Thank you. Hello everybody, good evening. I'm Henoveva and I wanted to apologize for the error that I made in my application that ended up disqualifying me. So I just wanted to, it was a human error. I didn't mean to sneak in or anything. So I want to apologize to everybody and I look forward to working with this group as a public mem member, which is how I'm here tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Hannah Veva. Thank you. Is there Hannah. any other public comment? See none, we'll move on to our first um, agenda item, discussion and possible action for a list of qualifications. Vicki, I, I just want to check. I see Scott Rafferty with a hand up. I don't know. If oh, I am sorry. Comment. Scott, did you want to come up, comment under um, public comment? Or did you want to address us under the first agenda item? Uh, well, very quickly, I just wanted to say how grateful I am to Henoveva uh, for her generosity. Um, I mean, the form was designed in a way that really didn't highlight the eligibility very well. And uh, uh, I've tried to resolve it with, the, um, uh, with Mr. Freeman before the meeting. Uh, and uh, I think she's just been very gracious. Nobody knows more about San Pablo uh, than Hanoveva, and it's so important uh, that we have the benefit of her insights. And, and I, I, I also want to mention um, uh, Dan Leahy, uh, who, has, who has written me, and uh, I, I regret what happened to him. Uh, I mean, he is... Um, he should not have been disqualified, but uh, he's accepted it very graciously, and he really wants to contribute. And I, I hope you take him up on that and find some way for him to be involved. If he, uh, uh, according to my daughter, who actually knows him, I, I did not. Uh, he's fantastic. So he's our debate coach. So, uh, and I also briefly, since it's not on the agenda, wanted to say that uh, five thousand or even fifteen thousand is not enough for outreach. Um, Napa, which has a quarter year population and no designated languages under the Voting Rights Act, you have two, is budgeting $40,000. Uh, interpretation for 11 meetings is not inexpensive, and you have venue rentals. Uh, Hanoveva's talked about canvassing, printing, uh, and uh, ADA compliance. Your website needs ADA compliance. All these things are not. Uh, uh, conceivably within $5,000. Uh, 
Mr. Jordan said that they went everywhere uh, and did everything on $5,000, but their map was rejected by the county committee because they didn't do public outreach. And they saved on interpretation because they already had it at board meetings and they didn't hold hearings in Latino neighborhoods. So uh, I don't think that's a model. I think you're gonna have to go significantly higher. And I think Napa is kind of a, uh, a model and uh, the clerk there is, did a great job. So she's a resource too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. I have a couple exhibits uh, that I was gonna send to Vicki. I just finished them. And uh, you know, at her discretion, she can forward them along, but it also has some, uh, uh, just a, a record of my comments for your convenience. I will forward that on to Thank um, commissioners. Thank you. Is there any other public comment at this time? Seeing none, we will move on to our discussion and possible action items. Our first item is a list of qualifications for hiring legal counsel for an RFQ. Um, so under uh, information only, I did send out to board members a um, RFQ from Santa Barbara. I've also uh, gave it to um, uh, uh, Rochelle. And if we could pull that up on the screens to take a look at it. As an example, we don't have to, we do not have to follow this. Um, we can set our own. It's just was I, instead of starting from scratch, I thought it might be helpful to have to look at something that someone else has done and to start from there. And I do see a hand up for Scott Rafferty. At this time, we're going to just first take a look if we can pull that up, Rochelle. Apologies, I believe I have the wrong um, document up. Can you repeat that? The um, it's on the Santa Barbara website. It is their um, their one with a list of qualifications. That might be Rochelle. It. That's the correct document. Oh. Um, if you would just scroll down. Yeah, to I think it is page oh two. Yeah. Yeah. And scroll keep down. Keep going. A bit. Keep going. Perfect. Right there. Thank you. So here's a list of um, qualifications that they believed were important to um, for their, when they went out and looked for uh, legal representations. I'm not going to read to you. I believe we're all adults and can read. Um, I have sent this out. I'm hoping that people did get a chance to look at it. Is there anybody who um, needed some more time to look at it? Yeah, just for public transparency's sake, could we please have Rochelle scroll up about half a page to where it says scope, no, um, go up to, I think starting at the bottom of page one, right there, scope of services. Uh, I think that's where it starts laying out the qualifications and duties for the legal advisor for this particular commission. Excellent. Thank you, Derek. And can we, we can we scroll down just a bit more on the on the second page? So at this time, before I open it up to commissioners to talk on it, I am going to take public comment on this item. And I see two hands up, but they're both for Scott, so. Um, do, am I on? Yes. So I contributed this. I was one of three candidates for this position. The other two had a very, very impressive uh, litigation teams. 
And that is, um, I think, what the uh, uh, what they, the commission wanted. I don't think it's what they should have wanted. And I was uh, offering a hundred thousand dollars. They were at three hundred, so I wasn't really competitive for that. I think what you really need is a first-rate administrative lawyer that knows the Brown Act, Public Records Act, inside and out, and is really committed and experienced in proactive transparency and, and public outreach. Uh, the way you don't want to prepare for litigation, you want to avoid it. Somebody who really understands what it means to be quasi-judicial and can counsel you about ex-party rules, uh, that's the requirement. I don't think it's something you're going to find in a school district attorney. I think uh, that that as a standard would disqualify most of the most of the best firms or and individuals that could perform this role. Uh, I think it's actually separate from the other very important legal task, which is uh, defending your map, advising you on section two, and defending the legality of your map. Uh, that is something that could San Diego paid about ten or fifteen thousand dollars for it as a standalone task. I think you could separate that. You have a little bit more time, not much, but but uh, finally, uh, just put litigation out of your mind uh, and uh, focus on avoiding it. And if it does, your map does get challenged. Frankly, I think it's up to the the uh, school board to decide how much public money is gonna be spent defending it because they're elected officials and they are more accountable than you are in this regard. So those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Hannah Veva, you have your hand up? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, one question was, I went to the website today to find the notice of this meeting because I had it on my calendar but then, you know, of course, I didn't get a notice because I'm not on the commission anymore. So I went to the website and I found the agenda. Now, I think this document should have been there too. If you send it out to your commissioners, then it needs to be in the, it, needs to, it becomes a public document and I could have read it. The way it happened, I'm just reading it right now. And of course, it's like, it's very complicated. And I think my comment and quickly having read it, to me, it's, it's, it's too general. It's missing something that's specific to redistricting, which it might be in all these numbers that it says, you know, besides the Brown Act, uh, all the other code sections. So that's my, and I think uh, Mr. Rafferty was saying the same, similar thing. To me as a lay person, it's missing that piece of it, which is very, the specialty that I think it requires. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah Deva. Okay, hey, is there any other more, is there any other public comment at this time? I have something in the chat. Um, and I would like to, at this time, um, ask for commissioner input. This, this wasn't attached to the document because it's not really a document that we've generated. What it was, was an example. These were examples of of things that I found through a Google search, just so that we didn't have to go and reinvent the wheel again, that we can throw all of these out and do our own thing. Um, it just was kind of a starting place. And again, as I've told many people, it is the, um, I just work to facilitate the meetings and to um, then serve at the pleasure of the commissioners. So the, whatever the majorities of the commissioners decide to do is, um, definitely something that I'm going to put um, extra work in and to make sure that it uh, it gets done. So are there any com comments from commissioners at this time that way we would like to move forward on this? Richie? Yeah, I would agree with Scott that we want somebody who is uh, looking to avoid litigation um, and at the same time, uh, wants to get the job done. Um, I'm feeling optimistic from the standpoint that a map was agreed upon by the parties in 2018. And so we can go back and see 
how that was accomplished, ask the parties what they thought was defective, what they thought was good about that map. And um, if we can use that as a basis for in, in our interviews um, and like interviewing anybody um, for any job, it would be experience and um, primarily experience and education in um, this kind of field. This, to my knowledge, is a very new field. Um, and we may be one of the first school districts, if not the first school district to use an independent um, redistricting committee. So um, I do agree that since it's so brand new and to list that they need to have worked for schools and districts in the past, that that would be um, an, um, a barrier for some um, perhaps even um, um, a false barrier for some to, to have who would have the ability to help us to do, to guide us. So I, I do think that um, at this time, we don't need, we don't desperately need somebody who's worked with school districts before because we're not really a school district. We, we are only a commission. We are a commission for redistricting. So we don't deal with any of the other issues um, of a school district. And being on a K-12 um, board for 15 years, um, this is very different. So is there other input from other board members? Yes, um, Commissioner Hilliard here. Um, Rochelle, can you please scroll down a bit so that the, the header, essential knowledge and abilities rests at the top of the page? Thank you, that's good. Um, so I concur with what Vicki said, um, what Richie said and what Mr. Rafferty said. I do not think um, we need to require experience working for a school district for um, our RFPs as long as the prospective firms and attorneys can do their research and have some familiarity with administrative law, the elections code, um, the relevant lawsuits that bring us here today, and the Brown Act, um, Political Reform Act, Public Records Act, things like that, just so that they can advise us so that we are transparent, we get public buy-in, and that the maps that we propose um, you know, are consistent with the law. Um, and I think that Vicki, um, I'm super grateful for her sending this out uh, just because I think this is a rubric. You know, this is not um, necessarily what we're going to uh, draft up for our RFP, but it's really helpful. You know, it's like, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can customize this for our purposes. And I think that if we do decide to adopt um, an RFP, at the next meeting or in two meetings, we can use this Santa Barbara document to draft our own document about what we want in legal counsel. And I think that would be the first step in securing um, proposals from prospective um, law firms. And we could customize this as we see fit. Um, thank you. Thank you. Other commissioner input? You can just raise your hand if you don't have to find the little hand. I see a couple hands still up. Are there other commission out input on this item? Should we go back and look at them step by step and see what this has that we like and that what it doesn't like? And Rochelle, are you going to be taking um, doing notes for us? We don't have a secretary. Apologies, I wasn't aware that I would take notes, but I can try my best to make sure that we get that done. The, uh, yeah, that was Bobby's role. And until we have, um, like we said, we've hired legal counsel or some of these, these positions, we, we've been depending on Bobby to, to help okay. with some of these. And okay. also to get things posted on our website, including the recording. Okay, sure thing. So let's start back up a little bit back at the right there, scope of services. 
So legal counsel shall provide independent legal counsel to the commission, including providing independent legal advice and handling litigation when required from time to time. I would also probably put in that general rule that they will help us with uh, agenda setting, um, Brown Act. Um, I guess we can list it down below as well. Um, so let's look at the first one. Under the general direction of the commission, the legal counsel shall serve as the legal advisor for the commission and consultants and staff assigned to the commission. Does anybody want to add or amend that bullet point? Do we have consensus on it staying on or do we have consensus of removing it? I think we should keep it. Okay, we have one keep it. Oh, nice. Keep. I think we should keep it as well. Craig? Looks, yeah. Okay, Richie? Looks good to me. James? Yes, it's good. Okay. So at this point in time, we will continue with the service legal advisor and commission and, and consultants and staff assigned to the commission. Moving on to the next bullet. Advise the commission at meetings, public hearings, and other legal proceedings. Um, not only would they advise, but I think they would um, help us set up the meetings, making sure that they uh, fulfill the stipulations in the agreement as far as the 11 meetings and, and, and where they should be located. So probably the logistics of those meetings as well. So I would like to amend that to um, not only say advise the commission meeting, public hearings and other legal proceedings, but to um, also assist in the logistics of setting up all the meetings. Um, Richie? Yeah, thank you. Um, would it be appropriate to have our legal counsel um, set strategies for us or help us set strategies? I think that's what I mean by logistics. Okay. By setting Good. up the list logistics, it would be helping us strategize on how we meet the, the, the requirements Good. and the stipulation. So I think Richie and I are on the same page. Does anyone else want to add, delete, or argue another point on that? Are we, are we going to give direction to uh, set up the second bullet that way? We have consensus? Good. One, two, three. Craig or James, four? James, OK. So right. we have consensus. Good. Now we have consensus from everyone present today. Excellent, we move on to the next one, to ensure that all constitutional, statutory and regulatory recommendations and court decisions governing the commission's activity are provide, promptly, properly interpreted, including but not limited to. Now, I think we need to take this out. We don't need including but not limited to Santa Barbara County Code section. But the Ralph Brown M Act, Public Records Act, Elections Code, and the Federal Voting Rights Act should stay in, I believe. So if we could strike the Santa Barbara County Code section that it cites there, that would not apply to us. Are there, is there input from commissioners on that one bullet? Okay, I'm gonna start calling on you guys. <laughs> is there any applicable Contra Costa County Code that would need to be included in place of Santa Barbara? That is an excellent question, and I do not have the answer. Does anyone want to venture any of the, of the, of the Contra Costa County codes? Do you want to ask? OK, we've got a comment. Substitute stipulated judgment for the code 
provide legal representation if applicable in court, not including post map litigation. And there are no applicable CCC codes that are um, that need to be set up by the commission. So if we have uh, four commissioners that want to move in that direction, can I see a thumbs up? Okay, one, there's two, there's three, there's four. So we will be moving in that way. Rochelle, did you get that? It's in the chat if you need it. Yes, I am pulling it from the chat now. Thank you. You ready to move on? Are we ready? I yes. think you need to, um, Rochelle, um, block out of the chat because it's blocking the, the screen. Apologies. Perfect. So moving on then, provide legal representation, administry, and if applicable in court. Um, I think that's a go. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Um, render written and verbal legal advice. I think that's a go. Seems like common sense. One, two, three, four. But you feel good with that one? A five, okay. Render legal advice regarding policies within the commission's legal areas of responsibility, if any. I think that sounds reasonable. Let's see, one, two, three, shakes of the head. James, Craig, four, five, excellent. Um, ensure that in any administrative policies adopted by the commission are cons consistent with law and are implemented fair. And, ah, that's where fairly goes in. Let's change that word from fair to fairly and impartiality. So are implemented fairly and impartiality. Impartiality. Okay, tongue twist. Moving on to our next paragraph. Thank you, Rochelle. The last paragraph, legal counsel should ensure that information relating to legal counsel's legal support of the commission is protected as required by Business and Professions Code section 6068E. This includes legal counsels preserving the confidentiality of the information from the county of, okay, we have to, we have to change this one. Um, I don't know if we have a business and professions code section 6068E that might pertain just to Santa Barbara. That's the state code. The state code? Yes. So should we keep that in, Derek? We believe? should keep that in, yes. Keep that in. This includes legal counsel preserving the confidentiality of the information. I believe we'll just strike from the county of Santa Barbara's office. And right. Just put Oh, go ahead, Vicki. I'll, I'll add at the end. And just replace that with the West Contra Costa um, Unified School District's Independent Redistricting Commission with that. I would, uh, can I suggest, we would strike out the section reading County of Santa Barbara's Office of County Council 
and replace that with legal counsel for the West Contra Costa Unified School District, because I think there may be situations where um, the commission's attorneys need to engage in arm's length discussions with um, the legal counsel from the district. So that wow. basically this paragraph is just saying that uh, the commission's business and communications with the attorneys will be confidential except for um, where appropriate to have discussions with legal counsel for the school district. Excellent. Rochelle, did you get that? I did not get all of it. Can you please repeat, repeat that? I'm sorry. Sure. So um, in paragraph, in that paragraph, uh, line three, starting at the end where it says County of Santa Barbara's Office of County Council, we're going to strike that out and we're going to replace that with legal counsel for the West Contra Costa Unified School District. Great, thank you. Thanks. And that, let's go on to our next bullet. Oh, did I get consensus? Are we good on that one? I need four. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Good. Moving on. Active membership in the state active membership in the state bar of California. I think that's a that's a keeper, correct? We're there. Yep. I see shakes of the head. Good. Moving on. Ability to communicate effectively in writing and oral presentation with a variety of contracts, including the commissioners outside attorneys, public officials, the public press and staff. Good, Richie likes it, Derek likes it, good. Craig, yeah. good, okay, good James, okay. The ability to accurately appraise legal problems, perform legal research and correctly apply legal principles, evidentiary rules and precedents to pro propose solutions. I think that's, I've got three, four, five shakes of the head. Ability to write and edit correspondence, pleadings, briefings, talking points, and legal op opinions. I think we've got good. We're getting good. We're getting good at this. Ability yep. to represent the commission at meetings, public hearings, and other legal proceedings. I think this is good. We're going. We're moving now. Ability to synthesize, clarify, and disseminate uh, complex information. I think we're there. Good, good, good. Um, the knowledge of the California Elections Code sections, 23000 uh, through 23004 and 21500 through 21509, including as amended by AB 1276, effective January 1, 2020. We also have a note that 21500 to 21508 are the Fair Maps Act criteria for counties. The stipulated judgment incorporates the very similar language, almost verbatim, but strike amendment about prison and timing. So, um, Rochelle, if you could incorporate that chat item into that bullet point, you can just copy and paste that one. We won't have to repeat it. And that way we will be aligned with our stipulations, the judgment. Another criteria that school board had expected and previously recommended was that the independent council not have represented the West Contra Costa Unified School District previously, nor that they have sued the district previously to ensure independence. Um, I think I do like the um, criteria for school board has um, not previously uh, represented the West Contra Costa Unified District. Northern Sorry, may I speak quickly on that one? Um, Absolutely. As, as, to, as to Mr. Freeman's um, comment, uh, I think that will be addressed in um, on page three under the proposal requirements, number four. Um, 
listed as additional information. Can you scroll down to that, please? Number four, right there. Um, it asks prospective firms to please confirm that your firm has run a conflicts check and does not have any potential conflicts of interest. Um, I would suggest that we identify here potential conflicts of interest would include, but would not be limited to having represented West Contra Costa Unified School District previously, nor have sued the district previously, just to uh, cover all our bases there. Uh, there is a, 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 a thought, a stream of thought that there is, um, that there may be uh, firms that have represented teachers and that teachers may have had to sue the district in the past. So um, I do believe we do want to have the, the, that, that for some stipulated um, list of conflicts. I do okay. think that they shouldn't have worked for the West Contra Costa district before. That's, um, I think that's the biggest concern yes. is, um, you know, in the roles of professional responsibility, you would not want an attorney who has represented the other side <laughs> um, looking out for your interests. So I think um, as long as we emphasize that the prospective law firm has not rep represented West Contra Costa Unified School District or provided them any legal advice that should cover our bases. Excellent. I, I concur with that um, language. Do I have uh, the majority of board of commissioners agreeing with that? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So Rochelle, do you need me to repeat what we were going to do with that? Yes, please. So um, under item four, we will be adding language to it when we get down there. At this time, if we can go back up to where we were previously. I think we were on the California elections codes and we've added um, we haven't added any um, codes um, we've changed fairly to fairly and we added the maps act criteria because it is stipulated in it so in the chat box um, if you want to copy and paste uh, Scott Rafferty's to everyone um, chat where it's 21500 to 21508 are the Fairmax Act criteria for counties. Stipulated judgment incorporates very similar language, almost verbatim, but strike the amendment about prisons and timing. We could have that added to that bullet. When we get down to item four, we'll talk about conflict. Well, while you're doing that, I think I can just go through the last two bullet points, the knowledge of the Ralph M. Brown Act, Political Reform Act and Public Records Act requirements, I think uh, is there a consensus on that? I see one, two, three, James, four, and five. Great. And then the last one is a demonstrated experience and expertise in implementation and enforcement of the Federal Voting Rights Act of 1965. And I think that's um, another easy one. One, two, Craig, going, Derek, there's three, four. I think we're in consensus on that one as well. Now we're on proposals for requirements. To assist the commission in selecting legal counsel, please ensure that your proposal includes the following information. Your firm description, provide a brief description of your firm and qualifications in the area of state and federal laws governing redistricting in California, indicate the location of your main California office. Are we in consensus in keeping that? Are there any additions, amendments, keeping it? 
Richie's thumb up. We've got James, we've got Derek and Craig. Excellent. Item two, assign the personnel. Identify your firm's team for the assignment, specifically identifying the individual who serve as the overall lead for the engagement and primary service provider in the legal counsel role. Include only those persons who are actually expected to work on the engagement. Provide resumes for each participating team member. Highlight relevant experience to meet essential knowledges and abilities. Are there amendment changes or consensus of leaving this in or kicking it out? Comments from board commissioners? Questions or comments from board members? Are there questions or comments from board members? Richie? Uh, it looks good to me as is. There's one consensus to move forward. Two, three, hey, four. Derek, are you good with this? Or are you thinking? You're on mute. Yes, uh, um, I agree with it. Okay, there we go. We've got all five for our assigned personnel. Our experience. Or did we just do that? We did. Moving on to item four, additional information. Please confirm that your firm has run a conflicts check and does not have any of the potential conflicts of interest. Also, please review the elections code section 23003. And we're going to strike the Santa Barbara County code sections. Agreed. Agreed, excellent. And Confirm that anyone assigned to provide services under the contract would not be disqualified under elections code section 23003. And we're going to strike the Santa Barbara code again. Yes. And we're going to add some language at this time. Yes. Um, what I'd like to do, I typed out what I uh, think we decided upon for that second sentence. And it's in the chat now. Excellent. So, hold on. Let me, there we go. There we go. So again, Rochelle, you can um, copy and paste that in under item four and the suggested changes are as followed. Suggested language for proposal requirements number four, second sentence should read, for example, potential conflicts of interest shall include but not be limited to representing, contracting with or providing legal advice to the West Contra Costa Unified School District. Is there commissioner input on that? Questions, concerns? I think it's- can, um, can you or Derek clarify again how, um, or what we decided about the idea of um, including that whether agency or firms may have sued the district, there was some discussion about that would be a conflict as well as if involved in suing the district as well so, as representing the district. You could have a firm that may have taken a teacher's um, lawsuit and sued the district. And um, in, in um, and I guess there was a, an opinion that that shouldn't preclude them. It's more of a conflict of interest if someone has worked for the district, provided legal services aiding the district um, and, and um, that maybe then have the district's best interests in heart. That I think tends to be more of a conflict, um, right. but it's open for discussion. If you feel differently, Craig, we're, we're open to listen to anything you would like to add. No, I think that makes sense what you say there, Vicki. Um, I mean, I think it's important, we, the, the language Derek proposed says not excluded to. So if there's other conflicts that come up during the process that are not articulated in the language, it, we're still able to, to discuss those at a later time. And um, if we think there, you know, there's other potential areas of conflict that could come up. So 
Um, I'm fine with the, that wording. So we have an item in the chat that says, now I'm not sure I can read this because it's uh, referencing the West Contra Costa board specific request because I'm not sure per the stipulation that we're supposed to have direct or indirect conversations with the board on this item. Um, is there uh, Well, is Mr. Freeman simply conveying to us what the board's request is? Right. On this matter, he's providing information to us in terms of what the board is requesting. Um, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I see. So it says we can guide you on what the stipulation says. So does the stipulation that you agreed to have um, the stipulated fact that um, the, uh, we cannot hire anyone, specifically the CVRA not be um, eligible? So the person who's brought this on the other side can't be eligible as well. All right, so does uh, does the stipulate, I'm not clear, does the stipulation agreement say that? I'm not sure that of the- Oh, uh, it does not provide for independent legal, so there's nothing specific about it. So if Mr. Freeman is conveying to us the board's request in terms of uh, our choice of a legal counsel that it not be someone who is through the district of matters related to election law. Exactly. I see. Uh, well, we don't necessarily need to get into that uh, in the, well, I guess in, in, unless we want to just preclude, well, I don't know. I have to defer to the rest of you folks on legal issues. This is not my area of expertise. I, I haven't really dealt with these types of issues before. I mean, what Derek, what do you think on this? I was going to say we have an expert, Derek. <laughs> not an expert, but I I have to look at the stipulation and, uh, and I'm trying to skim the California Voting Rights Act. Um, what I would request is that we table this provision for now um, so that I can take a look at it and I'll get back to you, hopefully by the end of the meeting. Do we have consensus on tabling this, this one for now? So Derek can take a look at it. We've got, yep, we've got consensus. Thanks. Okay, moving on. Fees, please indicate your firm's fees for the legal counsel row to the extent hourly fees are proposed. Please include an estimate on the total fee and or ex uh, expected range and not to exceed amount. Also, please indicate that the expenses you will bill in addition to the fees and proposed cap. Are there, I've got a thumbs up from Richie. Are there questions, comments, changes from commissioners? Looks like um, if I get a couple more thumbs up, there we go. We've got we've got majority. Let's we'll we'll keep the fees. Uh, moving on to the next item, Rochelle, if you could scroll down a little bit. Form contract. A form contract is attached. If your firm has any proposed changes to the contract, please identify them as part of your firm's response. Any thoughts? Commissioners, Derek, is this standard? Yes, that's pretty standard. Excellent. If it's pretty standard. I say that we leave it in the contract. Is there consensus to leave well, it in? The only thing is with this document here, there it does not appear that the form contract is right. included. So we would need to establish draft a contract, contract <laughs> or find a form contract that we amend to our purposes. Okay. Fine. And just, I think that um, in general, we would incorporate the uh, requirements and qualifications that we're looking for and um, essential duties into the contract. I mean, it's basically, it's kind of boilerplate. Great. I'll see if I can't research that and find a example. And disclaimers. It is noted that the commission uh, reserves the right to reject any and all responses, cancel, modify, or reissue an RFP, negotiate with any, all, or none of the respondents, and solicit best and final offers from any, all, or none of the respondents. 
This RFP does not commit the commission to negotiate a contract, nor does it obligate them to pay for any costs incurred in the preparation and submission of your response or in the anticipation of a contract. The commission reserves the right to recommend that the board of super, that the, that I, should we substitute the um, West Contra Costa, is it West Contra Costa School District that will be providing, will be doing the contract then? Should we substitute that? Oh. Yes. So we should substitute that in at that point. And the, uh, the commission reserves the right to recommend that the West Contra Costa, West Contra Costa Unified School District board, board, board members, Contact contract with any of the firms responding to the RFP based on the commission's judgment and evaluating the firm's proposal, including but not limited to its qualifications, capabilities, and free quote. There are changes, recommend uh, comments about that, that item. Is that pretty standard again, Derek? I just need to make sure I understand this here. Any payments that we make or that are made on our, on our behalf to this law firm would be coming from the district board. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, that makes sense then. Our last one, communications, so that we do not need to post and share responses to questions with um, proposers. We do not plan to have substantive conversations with any proposers. Is that standard? Is that standard? So are we okay with the standard on our last vote? One, two, three, four, five. Craig, did you, is that okay with you? Yeah. Good, okay. Awesome. Let's see, we've got another comment in the chat, a couple of them. That was because the county was managing the RFP. Okay, got it. All right, moving on, let's see. So this is our first draft of the RFQs and RFPs. Um, this can come back in a cleaned up form at our next meeting. We will have it attached, Teneveva, um, and can approve it then, or, um, well, let me hear from the commissioners and what your, what your approval, uh, what your decision is and how to move forward. I would um, like to request that um, Rochelle incorporates the comments um, as best as possible. I know we're talking kind of fast and that some yep. things may get missed and that this be that her draft be sent to each of the commissioners to review and add comments to. Um, maybe we can do that in a, in a Google Doc or something where all of our comments go into one document and then we could post that for public review and comment in advance of the next meeting. And then we could do a line by line vote to make sure that everything's transparent and above board before we send this RFP out to the next, excuse me, to the uh, to be publicized to see which firms are interested. Excellent suggestion. I'm in agreement with that. Um, okay. Rochelle, does that propose a, is that proposal something you can do? Can you do a Google Doc, Docs? create a Google Doc for comments. Is that in just the chat or is this all comments? All comments. And, and Google Forms has a, a specific um, format that you can use that can have the document in there with the changes. And then each one of us can review it and add comments and, and um, um, do it. If you're not... Um, oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, if you could send it. So uh, what, what we're suggesting is you send your draft in um, RFP Doc. with the comments from today to each of the commissioners and allow us to edit in a shared document. And we would post that shared document to the redistricting Oops. website in advance of our next meeting so that the public can see it, prepare their comments. And then at our next meeting, we'd go line by line. Um, to approve the contents of the letter before we send it out. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. Outstanding. 
I just had a question. Uh, I just want to make sure there's no complications with us in terms of transparency or the Brown Act of editing a document together outside of a public meeting. I don't know how that, like if we're all adding comments and responding to other people's comments, at what point does it become a, a Brown Act issue if it's not in the context of a public meeting? I don't know, I'm just raising the question. That's a great, great question. Yeah. I'm not sure the Brown Act has taken the Google Docs format into um, consideration, but I would think that anytime we have business of the board that we're doing outside um, that we need to make sure that we are not having a serial meeting. And I do think that the Google Docs meeting that may be construed as a serial meeting for all of us to, to get consensus on the final document. So Rochelle, let's, let's um, modify that. Let's send out the uh, document. We're gonna, we're gonna post it to the website, send it out to board members. Board members are gonna send it back into you with their comments at that time we will post it to the next agenda and that way it'll be under agenda item. All of the information will come out at the same time. Everyone will see it. And so that way we won't have a um, meeting, a serial meeting. <laughs> Great idea, Vicki. I'm just, I just did a quick uh, check for what the Brown Act prohibits. And I think the Google doc might it's in that gray area. It's so in that gray be, area. So let's just let's, to be safe. We should be safe. have um, <laughs> Rochelle send out her comments to each of us, and then we can each bring our comments to the next meeting, and we'll do a line by line edit and finalize the document. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Great. Anything else on this item? Okay. We will bring that back at our next meeting. We will get comments. The we, Rochelle will be um, adding our comments to a document. It will be sent out, it will be posted to the website, and then we will be bringing that forward at our next meeting, which we will have to decide. So moving on to our next agenda item, which is... RFP for um, a demographer. So we want to look at qualifications for demographer and uh, request for proposal for demographer. So if you're not a commissioner, could you please mute so that we don't have any background? Thank you. Um, so I did not come across much for this one. So I am open for suggestions from commissioners. We could possibly uh, look at hiring someone to do this for us, our, our legal counsel, or we could, uh, I can do some more research to see if we have demographers and I can bring that back to our next meeting. Um, what's the pleasure of the commission? Richie? Uh, yeah, I think all of those are good ideas, actually. Uh, we could have our legal counsel uh, help us with this um, and that individual members can see if they can find um, any document that is similar to the one that we just used um, in finding a um, legal counsel. So I have a proposal from Commissioner Richie Cook. Uh, does that it seem uh, direction the board members? Do we have consensus on going that way? We have one, two, three, four, James, five, Excellent. So we will be looking at that at our next meeting for demographer. We'll be looking for more input from legal. So we really need to get this legal, um, this part done. We need to hire someone legal to help us out. Exactly. Okay. Let's look at our next agenda item. Moving on to replacing a commissioner. Did you allow for public comment on the one you just ended? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Hanaveve. I appreciate that. Public comment on a demographer. 
my comment was earlier, somebody had mentioned that in 2018, the Unified School District did, you know, they did, we did a, we did a district team for the first time. So uh, they must have had a demographer or some, some RFP for one. So I'm just saying maybe the district could share that with Vicky um, on, on that process. It happened two years ago. Excellent okay. suggestion. I'll look into that. Any other public comment? Scott, your hand is up. Scott, would you like to comment under the demographer? You're muted. You're still muted. Rochelle, could you see if you can unmute Mr. Rafferty? Yes, I sent him a uh, request to unmute. Thank you. I were waiting, let's see. Oh, let's see if it's in the chat. Yeah, it won't let me unmute because there appears to be two of me. Could you write your statement in the chat for us and I can read it? I did send out another example of a map tool if Commissioners want to research that and look at that um, and bring their ideas back to the next meeting. That would be helpful. So the next agenda item was um, a mapping tool, a mapping tool um, web page I sent out into in a separate um, email just for your information. Again, if, if commissioners would like to look at that, um, I can post the website on this. Let's see, where is it? That is a mapping tool that I found. I don't know if it's going to be any useful. Another example of someone registered train is in Napa. I don't know if it would be helpful for you. But it's... I think that's, and then I also want to give it a slider. So if any members of the public would like to check out and would like to have input, those please copy and paste those websites. You can, for, just for information. 
And did we have any more comments under this item? Seeing none, we'll move on to replacement of, um, of uh, uh, commissioner. So at this time, um, according to the stipulation, it appears that Judge Henderson is responsible for choosing a um, Okay, so can we try one more time to unmute Mr. Rafferty? Yes. Rochelle, sometimes if you click on his, there's an upper right-hand corner with three dots. If you click on that as the host, you can sometimes unmute him. Well, this just goes to show you guys, it wouldn't even let me in. So there's something wrong with the Zoom meeting. <laughs> it's unusual. <laughs> it doesn't list audio for um, his video box. It just lists the video, not the audio option. Okay, so there's a second um, box that has uh, Mr. Rafferty's name. Can you try the corner in that one, the three? See if you can unmute that. I can consider your written comments. So, um, Let's try it again. Mr. Rafferty, have you, um, is it possible for you to log off on your second device? Okay. I've tried on both. Well, at this time, um, since that item will be brought back at our next meeting, I will forward on all your comments to board members and um, we'll have an opportunity to address them at our future meeting. So moving on to replacement of a commissioner, I believe that those need to, um, uh, the, Application process is um, begun, as I believe. I think that those will be turned in to the district, and I think that those need to eventually get to Judge Henderson, is what I have believed. Um, I think that um, perhaps the district might be, um, maybe we put an extra step in there and that the district would mail them to a um, commissioner, perhaps our vice commissioner. Commissioner Hillard, if you want to take on the role of that and um, get then the applications to um, Judge Henderson. Sure, I can do that. Okay, James, did you have your hand up? Did you have a question, James? Do we have an end date, R Rochelle? Do you know if there's an end date when uh, we're gonna stop taking applications? I am not aware. We have a note from Henaviva that um, the public has not received any notice of an application process. Um, this is not the commission's purview. Harold, do you have uh, any insight into the application process? Yeah, thank you. If I can give you just a brief um, update. You know, what the stipulation has to say is that this is a process that is supposed to run through the district. It doesn't mention it running through the commission. And in fact, 
as we read the stipulation, it literally says it has to follow the same process that has been followed to date, which is running through the district. There is a complication about um, providing applications from folks who are giving personal information about contact and who they are uh, to anybody beyond the scope of what we've identified to the public. Uh, we are working with the district now to update, uh, including some of Mr. Rafferty's comments about the last form to get a new application form in place. The district's goal is to have those to uh, Judge Henderson and have selections made by the end of the month. So it is the district's position and understanding of the stipulation that the commission is not identified as being involved in that process. Um, and that is the direction we have from the board so far is that they're gonna keep moving forward. We have agreed to give Mr. Rafferty an advanced copy of the actual application form 24 hours in advance before it goes out, which we'll be doing. Um, we got uh, a little slowed down trying to take into account some of his comments. We're also at a disadvantage because uh, Mr. Jordan, who is the person at the district primarily responsible for this, is currently on vacation. But we're again, we're expecting this process will move forward. The district is going to engage in outreach to the Latino community, to trustee area three. We encourage um, all who are listening to reach out to folks as the more applicants, the better. I'm sure Mr. Rafferty will be doing his own outreach, uh, but that is currently the thinking on the timing. So the application has not been sent out yet? It is not. We're hoping it will go to Mr. Rafferty for a quick review shortly and, uh, and we'll go out thereafter. And really quickly, Mr. Freeman, is um, am I correct to assume that um, it, the onus will be on the public to contact the district for the application or download one from the website, similar to how um, the current commissioners um, applied to be on the board? Correct. And okay. we'll be sending out information to various groups and community organizations about how to do that. Okay. That's great. Thanks. Yep. And one last thing for this commission to do. Yeah, I don't need to review the application. Oh, yeah. They can go straight to Judge Henderson yep. and let Perfect. him... Uh, Review. Thank you. <laughs> and is there public comment on this item? Seeing none, we'll move on to our next agenda item. We did mapping tools. Um, was there any, uh, we did take, um, comment on that, I believe, public comments. So we're moving on to future meetings. Um, so are we um, going to set up a regular time? Do we need to set up more meetings? Do we want to, how do we want to handle this on a go forward? Um, yeah, I'd like to propose that we um, have one meeting, uh, say a second, third or fourth, or first uh, day of any day of the week, as far as I'm concerned. Um, well, and so that we, we have one meeting that's for sure, and then we have a second meeting, say in two weeks of the same month that is optional in case we run into some situation where we uh, really need to have something accomplished quickly. I think our biggest, I, I agree, I think our biggest and the thing we need to get down the quickest is to get legal counsel for our, our commission. I think that's really um, paramount. Um, I'd like to see us move on a demographer. Um, and then it could be that we have a lull because we don't have the information from the census. So that's, that is a possibility. So um, how do Tuesdays work for people? Tonight is a Tuesday, so I'm gonna ask about a Tuesday. So there's one thumb up from Richie, a thumb up from Craig. Um, James, was that how proposed does, date? A, month? a Tuesday, yeah. How do Tuesdays work? I'm gonna just start there since we, since we landed on a Tuesday tonight. Good for Derek, okay, good for Richie. Craig, you, was good for you, okay. And it's good for and it's good for me. So let's pick a Tuesday. So this is the last Tuesday of the month. Um, we could do a second and a fourth 
Tuesday, which has got a thumb up. Um, Derek, good. Craig, looks like you want to say something. Are you suggesting a, a second Tuesday in July? Yes, the second Tuesday and the fourth Tuesday. I think I'll July. be out of town the second Craig Tuesday has a vacation. in July. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's otherwise I'm available. Okay. So would we have a quorum at the um, at the proposed July 13 date? Because I think what we would be doing at that meeting is trying to finalize the application. Right. Or excuse me, the RFP. Right. I, I'm available. Uh, um, Richie and James, are you available the 13th? And Derek? Okay, yes. so we have four. Uh, I'll check in with Omar to see if we have it. Um, the one thing I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, um, yeah, we're short one board member, uh, commissioner, right. but, um, but we really want to move forward on the, um, on the hiring, the RFP and the RFQ. Um, so Craig, you can still participate, even though you won't be at the meeting, you can send when um, Rochelle sends out all of the information and, and the, 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 um, the paperwork, then you can, you know, add all your comments, add your things in there, and we can still read it at the next meeting. So you'll be there in spirit and still be on vacation. Is that okay? Sounds like the best of both worlds for me. So okay. yeah, that sounds fun. And it's 6 p.m. a good time to start or is, does, do we need a little bit later start for food or was 6 p.m. a good work time? 6 p.m., yes, okay. 6.30 is actually a little better for me. Yeah, 6.30 is, is awesome. Let's move the change. Good. I didn't want to move it because we did agree 6 p.m. last time, although I tried to move it to 6.30, if you saw. But um, so, let, so our next meeting will be Tuesday, July 13th at 6.30 p.m. And we will pick up at that time. Sounds so good. At this, good. Is there any public comment on this item? Richie? Uh, I just wanted to clarify. So in general, what we will try and do is meet twice a month, the second and fourth Tuesdays at 6.30. Um, and depending on how things look, we can cancel one of those perhaps. Okay. Right now we really, we want to get the ball moving so that we do have legal. Okay. Okay. Outstanding. Is there public comment on this item? Seeing none, we will move to our last one, adjournment. And our meeting is adjourned at 721. Thank you all for participating and um, coming. And we will see you at our next meeting on July 13th at 6.30 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.